Hello everyone. This is, um, I don't know really what to call this. I want to call it a bit about me. Uh, I don't know if I should call it the confession hour <laughs> or uh, all the things you have been asking me and have been wanting to know about me. I, 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 so I don't even know what I'm going to title this, but I have been getting so many questions from you about me, so many messages from you asking about me, asking about my past, asking about my present. I, and, and rightfully so. I, I think that's great. Um, the reason I usually don't talk about me is number one, I'm all over the internet. I, I have, they have a long Wikipedia, Wikipedia section on me. I don't even know who does those things. I haven't checked it recently, but I know it's long. It talks about my background, my family, the countries I have lived in, my education, my degrees, etc., 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 expertise, my work, the places I have worked for in the past. Everything is listed. So it's very easy to find out about me. Not only that, and I'm going to uh, come back to this point that I'm going to make right now towards the end. There is, I, I wrote a book, okay? It's uh, the book called Classified Woman. It's a biography. It's a Sibel Edmonds story. Most of it pertains to my experience uh, as, a, as a government whistleblower uh, with the FBI and all the things that took place because of it over almost 10 years. That includes uh, two administration. Uh, the information they gagged me on, actually most of it pertained to one administration, Bill Clinton and his administration, because the files that they gagged me on pertain to years 1997 to 2001. Anyhow, I wrote a book. That book was uh, first blocked by the government, they kept blocking it, then I violated their gag order and I published it. After they blocked me, the left's publishing houses went about censuring it because after I published it, the book became a bestseller, Classified Woman. I hired my own team, editors, uh, proofreaders. Uh, I, I, I fought in courts to publish it. Anyhow, I published it and those publishers they all censured it despite the fact that it was going to be a major moneymaker for them because it did become a bestseller in 2012, 2013. And it was a, um, it, it, it's, they said they were not going to publish it for several reasons. Mainly being I included Obama administration in that and I had mentioned in parts that some of these files, in fact, most of them pertain to the Clinton administration. Anyhow, it's not about my book. I don't want to talk about my book because you can find out. There, you will find videos of me under oath testifying, whether in Congress or when I have been in the past subpoenaed by various political parties for their own purposes, where I have testified. All of them are videotaped and I, have, I was placed under oath with my right hand up. So one of them is like two and a half, three hours long, exposing people and those people from, were from both parties, okay? So there is a lot about me out there. And because so many of you don't even know that there is a book that sums most of it up, not all of it, most of it up, uh, is because the left has been censuring it. Their media, their publishing houses, it's out there on Amazon. And I went there and I reduced the price for the, for the ebook as much as they allow me through Kindle publishing, where I, uh, this is from Create Space, where I published it as a self-publishing author, so that you all can get, get access to it. And I'm gonna provide a link to it, and uh, I will talk about it at the end. Now, there's always been, it's not, a, it's not something new, this speculations and questions and curiosity about my political party. And old, although I have talked about it during various interviews with various different people, alternative media outlets, etc., it, it, it hasn't been out as much. So I understand why you're curious. I understand why people are curious. Maybe I would be curious too. I have always been independent I, in, and independent politically. I've never ever been a member of Democratic Party or the Republican Party. 
Um, I have never asked any of my viewers as a journalist, as a media channel owner, Newsbud, before that BFB report, I have never advocated people to go and vote for somebody or not, not vote for somebody. I, I, tried, I have tried very hard to, I'm not saying centrist, to stay neutral. And not only that, I was neutral because of everything I had seen had and has brought me to this standing, to this position that is crap both sides, okay? And uh, in fact, I wrote a piece that was during, uh, <laughs> during the Obama uh, election campaigns, and I called it two sides of the same coin. No matter how, which way you flip it, it ends up being to the crap side, okay? And if you look at those people who fund these candidates, you will see a lot of those New World Order evildoers, financial institution, military industrial complex, big pharma, they end up giving their money to both <laughs> because it doesn't matter which one gets elected, especially with Congress, you know, those representatives, they're going to win. When elections cost so much money, it, it costs us tens of billions of dollars to elect one president for our country. And whoever is the candidate has to come up with that five, ten billion dollars. It automatically excludes good people and automatically puts out people who are willing to sell their soul, their mother and, and their wives and their sisters and their cousins and their constituents and integrity, everything. You have to kiss this ASS, that ASS, and I will do this for you. You give me this because, hey, how else are you going to come up with five, ten billion dollars? Right? Uh, same things with senators now. Tens of millions of dollars to run for the Senate. And they don't bother uh, with the people, really. Common people like you and I. They go to the, to the Bill Gates and the Soroses and the Koch brothers and all of them. Okay? All of them. And with that being the case, I know some of you are going to actually boo me here. Okay? But... With me, one of the things I promise you you're going to get, that's why I would never have been a candidate for State Department diplomatic position, because I ain't diplomatic. I've never been. I'm a straight shooter. I'm a straight talker out there. Everything you see is what you get. Everything you hear is what I think, what I believe. And it's the truth, nothing but the truth. In fact, if you look at my track record, despite being attacked by this party or that party and this thing and that thing, I have never been accused of lying. I have never accused or I have never proven wrong, whether it's in my political analysis, geopolitical analysis. True, I play safe. I always stick to the facts. I triple check my facts. But what you hear is what it is and what you will get from me, okay? It is what it is. So you may boo me for this, and it's a good, it's a good thing to have this conversation. You may boo me. I haven't voted since 2004. Last, last time I voted was 2004. And you're going to say, my God, you, you're not engaging in good citizenry. And I told you, I, I resisted. I have always resisted this notion of lesser of the two evil. My response to that notion of I'm going to vote, even though they are horrible, I'm going to vote for the lesser of the two evil. I hate that. I hate it. I don't like to use the word hate so many times and loathe, but I loathe it because I would, I would say to people, and I'm saying to you, to the people, this notion of voting for the lesser of the two evil, you're still voting for evil, okay? Are you okay with that? I'm not okay with that. I haven't been okay with that. And let's say you have, let me give you an example of two evils, okay? Uh, let's say it's like Dick Cheney, okay? versus Hillary Clinton. First of all, you have to first decide which one is less evil. And honestly, that's a tough call. I may be throwing, uh, uh, I throw at you this very hard example. I can't, I will not. I, I value my vote. I, I, I don't go and cast it for evil, especially when I'm sure, when I'm sure that both are really evil. It's like saying you're going to choose between Ted Bundy and Sean Camp, which one of the two serial killers? You have to support one. And I would tell you, I would say, uh, can you please get that? And 
I would tell, I would tell them, I would say, you know, two serial killers. I don't do that. Serial killers are serial killers, and that's no different. So no, I haven't voted, and that includes the. I'm sorry, I apologize for them. We are having some health crisis here, so things have been very difficult here. But um, I didn't vote in 2016. Now my husband, he. He's an independent as well. He has been independent for years. Way back when, I don't know, 35 years ago, he was a Republican, but then he got disgusted with the Republican Party, and he said, I don't see anything conservative about the Republican Party. In fact, he started seeing more things in common with the Libertarian Party, not the party, the Libertarian with the, not the capital L, but the old way conservatives, because he always has been a believer of a smaller government. And we have seen what Republicans have been doing, like during George W. Bush, how much smaller did our governments get? Let's see how many thousands of contractors we added to that already bloated government. So he's been an independent for the past 30 years. He voted in 2016, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and air all our laundries here. So he voted and he voted for Trump. And I ridiculed him for that. I'm telling you, I'm doing a straight talk. I said, oh my God, first of all, when he was just a candidate, I didn't think he was gonna even make it to the finishing line. I thought somebody propped up, you know, him there for entertainment purposes. You know, the guy who was in some TV show saying, you're fired, reality show. He wanted just to entertain himself and the people, and this was not gonna even go to the finishing line of going against the Democrats. I was wrong, okay? I told you there's integrity to say I was wrong, but I'm telling you what I thought, okay? And when he went and voted for him, I ridiculed him. I said, oh my God, you're voting for this guy who says you're fired? And, 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 and uh, I, I just, it was, it was a surreal process for me. And then for a while, I felt justified because I would show him, I'm like, uh-huh, look at the guy you voted for. He went and picked Bolton, the new conservative from the evil Bush and Dick Cheney era, or guys like Mattis, I knew about Mattis, and several other evildoers. So initially, I was feeling justified. I was saying, see, look at the people he's choosing. Look at some of these people he's bringing on board. He ain't no different than Dick Cheney, obviously, based on those things. But then, I also kept my eye on all developments, especially geopolitically and all the foreign policy moves. And then I started seeing anomalies there, you know, bringing, reducing our, the number of our troops in Iraq, ending this horrific, horrific war designed by Obama, the Democrats, the left, and Hillary Clinton putting an end and not letting our country end up. It was our creation, our fault, the whole thing. We did that, we being them, they did that. But really, and, and not only in talk, carrying it through, pulling our troops back. I started seeing how he actually played back countries like Turkey. I'm an expert on Turkish politics and how he handled that in foreign policy. And I have to tell you, I was surprised, pleasantly, saying, hmm, that's, that's kind of odd. That's odd. And, uh, and I, again, I started coming to a point, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, oh, I'm now currently a Trump supporter. I'm not saying that. I don't oppose him. And not only that, I'm getting to a point where I know I can bring myself to vote, actually go and vote for the first time since 2004, to vote and cast my vote for Trump administration against any of these people on the left. They haven't had one person. This is when you're looking at the gap is so wide between the good and bad. I mean, I'm not saying he's good, but everything in this world is relative, and I'm not talking about that minute relativity that kept me from voting and saying, yeah, which one is worse? It's hard to pick. There, this, this is enough of a relative gap that yes, 
Isabel Edmonds will go out and for the first time since 2004, I will vote. I know some of you are going to boo me. I know there are some people out there who are not going to give me any more like some kind of consulting jobs that I do on the sides and they are not anywhere near the governments or military industrial complex. I don't do those things. I do things that have nothing to do with politics. But even some people may drop that. So what? I haven't been asked publicly. Now I'm saying it publicly, not because I was hiding it before, because I was not being asked. Now I'm being asked publicly, and I want to do it publicly. I was wrong about Trump in, in not all of it yet. And there are some of you who are saying, there are so many of you from the left who are switching not to the Republican Party, but you're coming out of Democratic Party. You're sending me emails. You know, you're watching me right now. You're sending me messages through Patreon, through Newsbot, and you're saying, Sabelle, is he real? Is he for real? Before, and this is being right around the time he was elected, President Trump, I would say, of course not. Pooh, I don't think so. Are you crazy? Now, at least I pause and say, it may be. Considering how much he's being attacked by the despicable New World Order mainstream media, all of them, considering his most outspoken enemies, from Bill Gates and George Soros to Rockefellers and Mathis and Clintons and you name it, just that alone would say, oh, I will vote for him. Look who hates him. All the people I load hate him. I mean, just playing the logic game will say, I, I would logically will have to vote. I feel like I have to vote. We don't know. Things may change between now and then. What is he going to do with the mandatory vaccination? I don't know. But at least I tell those people who ask me the question saying, Sabal, is he for real? Now I say, I'm not sure, but looks like it. Okay? That's sincerity. I like it when people can say, I don't know. I don't like it when people who don't know something, they go and give you BS because they want to sound like they are so confident and they are so expert. And, and especially with the academic gobbledygookers, the ones who forecast everything, you know. You ask CNN, they are putting this, this news out there saying they did a survey. But yeah, we know how they do the survey sample, etc. And slam dunk, he is so far behind Biden. Heck no, lie. Everyone I know, including those I know in my personal life from the left, they are not voting for Biden. How could they? They have seen what you and I have seen, what we all have seen. We all have seen the same thing. I mean, we know uh, many people are ignorant, but hey, come on, people are not that dumb to vote Biden or Democrat after everything we have been seeing. Come on. I mean, uh, I have more faith in humanity, and I don't think stupidity can get to that degree. So that's the straight answer to your straightforward questions. I don't know what's going to happen between now and November, but yes, I was wrong about President Donald Trump four years ago. And yes, I have seen, especially within the foreign policy, a good example of it is very smart move. Man, he's easy. He's, he, either he's extremely smart or he has some really good people too. It's not only bad people he, he put out there and, and, and put within his circle. Whatever is the reason, he's been making one good move after another in foreign policy. He may be out there talking tough and kind of funny in a way that people would ridicule. But when you really get down to it and think about what he's doing with those talks, Brilliant, really with foreign policy, brilliant. One brilliant move, sound move. The decision, and hopefully it will be backed by action, it happens immediately, I hope it happens immediately, moving our troops from those bases in Germany. First of all, Cold War ended in 1991, okay? So let's say you linger there for another 10 years because things can switch back. Well, it ain't switching back, all right? And NATO, by the way, has nothing to do with China, so don't even mix China with that. All this money, all these resources, when we have so much need here in our country from infrastructure, and we are suffering, oh, we need updating, we are behind, okay? 
We have half million plus people homeless. About quarter to half of them are our own veterans. What I'm trying to say is half of our people don't have health care. We have all these things. And we are feeding EU, European countries, not their, like really that much their people, but these governments and that NATO bases and our base there with our troops in Germany and blah, blah, somewhere for nothing. There is no Cold War. With all that money, why? Especially now. And I tell you why especially now. Especially now, we are on their coup. They know it. There are generals there who know and they are, they, they are doing things. Yes. I told you in my previous video, I was very delighted to hear back on Twitter publicly from General Flynn saying, not my generals. Yeah, we have good generals out there. We do. You can be rest assured about that. I'm not saying we're going to win. I'm, gonna, I'm saying we have good ones on our side. But bring them back home. During the coup, that's one of the things that New World Order wants. And in fact, we may see creation of some international crises where our troops are overstretched. They are sent overseas, be it Libya. They are trying with Libya. Right now, they are trying with Libya. Do you know that? They are trying. Whether it's something being rekindled in Syria, whatever it is, sending the troops out there. You saw what happened with these areas, New York, etc., with the police forces and the riots. We need our military here on the home front. We do. We are facing coup, and there are some bad ex-generals out there, and there are some bad ones who are still in there. They haven't been exposed yet. I'm sure they're in there. You know that they are in there. This is a serious coup, and the election is less than six months away. So our troops, we need them more here at home than anywhere else. That's a smart move from the coup aspects. It's the smart move from the financial and economy aspects. And additionally, it's the smart move because Germany is against us. Germany is part of this new world order order agenda. They don't want Donald Trump. They hate Donald Trump. Guess which country has the largest numbers of Soros affiliate offices putting together, implementing Antifa groups in Europe? Their source roots go start following the chain of these connections and you're going to end up with Germany. Why are we paying Germany? Why are we having our troops there? Yes, I applaud that decision. I applaud that move. This was one example. What I'm telling you is, as a foreign analyst, geopolitical analyst, as a government active whistleblower, as an activist, as a civil liberties, bill of rights proponent, activist, I'm telling you, yes, there are some goods, and I'm getting to see it, and I'm not that small-minded or stupid or blind to not admit, hold on to my ideology given to me by some brainwash and not come out and admit and saying, yes, now we are looking at the wrong side and the right side. In this case, at least, it is. It is. And we are facing this coup threat. So you see, I confessed. I told you what I thought about him, and I told anyone who asked for my humble opinion, I told them. I have been telling what I just told you to other people, people who have asked me recently in my personal life. I'm telling you, you can go and see my record nowadays with hackers and the experts, especially Soros-funded billions, billionaire-funded uh, uh, spy software and, and agents out there. They can dig up everything from my IRS record. Anything that I have ever said, they can dig it up and try to humiliate me and show me how much of a liar I am, or you won't find it. I, it's pretty squeaky, boringly clean. And it is consistent in being independent. Never don't. The only time I donated to a politician, now I remembered, okay, let me come clean with that too. This was around 2006, 2007. Ron Paul was putting together a movement, Congressman Ron Paul, and they were two evils running against you, whatever it was. 
it and it sounded good the principles there were some good people involved and i don't know what they called it the ron paul movement there was a name for it and i hope that maybe he would establish a third party because i knew republicans were not going to let him run he was not corrupt enough he was not corrupt he's not corrupt at all let me put it he's clean okay and they ran this fundraising money bomb or something like that online and i truly believed and I, did, I was not proven wrong it's just that he didn't go through with the third party he's, he became too much of a chicken he got too scared and he's like okay either republicans or not and therefore i'm gonna go ahead and say bow exit the scene but i gave something like either hundred dollars or hundred fifty dollars with my credit card online to that ron paul fundraising efforts to oppose both of both sides i did that the only time in my life i have given money to a political candidate. That's it, okay? And uh, haven't voted since 2004. I don't know, uh, what you want to know about me, as far as biography, degrees, pedigree, all those stuff are out there for everyone to see. My whole life they have put it out there <laughs> for everyone to see. I want to encourage you to, to get a copy of my book, Classified Woman. First, let me put a disclaimer. This is not so that I profit out of encouraging my listeners to go buy my book because every book you buy, I'm going to make, in this case, maybe like 50 cents or 75 cents. So I'm plugging in my book trying to sell. Trust me, I put out that book in 2012, despite all odds. I have left it alone for so long. Recently, in the past few months, people have been sending me their photos holding my uh holding my books in their hands, which I am so honored. I am so sincerely thankful. It makes me feel justified that I didn't give up and I published a book. I fought them all and I published a book. I am not going to really make much money, if any money, from this. And in fact, I'm going to take 20% of the profit of that money that is my share and I'm going to give it to the ALS Society. That's uh, in, in lay term, layman terms, people refer to it as Lou Gehrig's disease. And I will maybe one day explain to you why that is. But several reasons for that. Number one, our movement is growing slowly but surely. And I want you to know more about me. But this is not this book only about me. If you go to Classified Woman under Amazon and take a look at the reviews. You will see five-star reviews from hundreds, four, five hundred, six hundred people, maybe thousand people. I haven't even checked it lately. These are people I don't know. And many of them will use this expression. It was an eye-opener for me about how corrupt, how corrupt our government has become. How foreign agents have been influencing and running the show. It to me, that's the part that matters. Not because they know, oh, there it is, Sabal Edmonds, the woman with that skin color who came. No. And if you see in this book, I'm not crying and babbling, saying, poor me, they did this to me. I, do, I, do, I hate those kinds of things. Oh, it feels sorry for poor me for what they did to me. In fact, I don't like, I dislike it when people, with all good intentions, introduced me as, oh, here's Sabelle Edmonds, the FBI government whistleblower. Whistleblower, I don't consider it being a career or a title. It's an action you engage in. They have put a name for it, whistleblowing, okay? You tell the truth to the public, to the media, to the, to the oversight agencies about serious wrongdoing, which is your duty to do when you have an oath of office and when you become you get a job I got and I took an oath, I pledged that I would do that, okay? Of course, people don't take it seriously. I did. I take everything seriously. You know me by now. And it was in 2001, 2002. It's an action a truth teller takes, tells the truth, suffers consequences, big time consequences, and then that's it, okay? I know there are whistleblowers who go on living decades for decades off of that, you know, oh, it's an XYZ government whistleblower. It's a Pentagon blah, blah, whistleblower. I don't like that. I don't like to be boxed in and introduced. As, not because I'm, 
I never regretted it. I'm proud of what I did, but that's not a title. It's not a job. It's not your money-making machine. You don't go and turn it into a career. No, it, I did it. I went through it. The story is written. You can learn about it, all those things. And that's it. I'm Sabelle Edmonds. I'm a geopolitical analyst. I'm a political analyst. I'm an investigative journalist. I have a psychology degree. I'm a wife for 30 years, have been a wife for 30 years. I'm a mother. I'm an international traveler, okay? I'm a, I'm a very good interior designer. I'm an excellent renovator. I get places. I renovate. I sell. That's one way I have supported uh, our family, uh, myself. So there are a lot of things I am, but that is not a title. It's not a career. I'm a whistleblower. Hi, Sabelle Edmonds, FBI whistleblower. No, I don't like that, okay? And I know people do it with good intention because they want to have a point of reference. Well, who is that? Remember once upon a time there was this five foot two petite little woman who came out and blew the whistle with FBI and she was gagged. Oh, that FBI whistleblower, I remember. So I know it's done with good intentions. All I'm telling you that I don't define myself. I don't introduce myself as government whistleblowers. Back to this book. There are many reasons. It's an eye-opener, not according to me. Please read the reviews on Amazon. It's an eye-opener because of what we are currently going through with this coup. We are dealing with the same people that are referenced and explained in this book. That's number two, okay? It's easy to read. It's a fast read. It's not one of those things filled with gobbledygook, okay? You're not going to be like, <laughs> if you read the reviews, people, they're saying, I, I couldn't put it down. I finished it in like one night. I, it, I was up till four o'clock. It's not my reviews. What I'm, I'm referencing them. I'm not gloating about my book, okay? And I put it out sincerely, everything in there. So that's number two. During this coup period, it, it is relevant, okay? It is relevant. Number three. With that, you're giving your third finger. I'm not going to do that because your children may be watching this, Okay? that third finger to the left who have been censoring this book. The government initially tried to censure it and I, and I fought it and I did it anyhow. The reason you haven't seen these books in the bookshelves, in Barnes and Nobles, in blah, blah airports, even though it's been a bestseller, is because the left, the Democratic Party, have been censoring it. They have been preventing it through the publishers because every single publisher in New York and in Chicago, every one of them are New World Order left. I guarantee you, do your research, then you're going to come back and agree with me. They wanted to keep it contained. They don't want... People coming and saying, hey, it was an eye opener because they don't want the eyes open, okay? So you are giving them the third finger, all right? And it's a good thing to do. You're saying, you know what? Your censorship, shove it, you, it won't work. I'm challenging it and I'm going to make it cheap enough that everybody can challenge it so that I make almost nothing and most of that nothing, I'm going to put it in good use with the ALS. It's a fatal disease. Lou Gehrig's disease, very little known about it. People are still researching it. There is no cure for it. And uh, so they, there are some good people with ALS Society who are trying to do good things. There, there is close to one million people who have this disease. And, uh, and it is a good cause. And I will explain later, hopefully, uh, when I have permission from my family members to do that more publicly. I'm going to use it for that. So you will be helping this cause for this disease and their people who have this disease and their family members and the future people who will have to deal or who will deal with this disease, okay? So there are several reasons. Now, as I said, I couldn't reduce the price for the print copy for classified women. It's something like $14 because... I published it through Create Spaces under Amazon. They don't let me. They're like, this is the as low as we allow you to put this book. Okay, fine. So I can't do anything with that. But I went to the Kindle version of it, the Amazon ebook version of it, and I was able, this is the lowest I could lower it there under my arrangement with them. They won't let me go be beyond that. So I lowered that 
I put it in there, it's like $3, okay? And as people will tell you, you can't finish everything in a few hours. Uh, get that book, get to know me better, because you, those of you who've been spending time listening to me yakking, many of your questions will be answered there, personal questions maybe will be answered there. Give the third finger to the left's publishers and get your eyes open. If they are already open, it may get open wider. Okay, let me put it that way. And we need that, we need that. It's one of those timeless books in terms of the issues it is dealing with and exposing. I, in my previous topic, I talked about the lobby, et cetera, the, 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 the infestation, the disease that has mushroomed all over this government, the corruption. Well, you're gonna even have a deeper understanding of that. And of course, it will also support all these videos. I wanna thank you all. I will put the link to uh, Classified Woman uh, in there, in the description box. The link for Patreon is there. Those of you who can and are willing to support this, you can take a few seconds, go to Patreon and throw whatever you can, whether it's a penny or $10 or $50 or whatever, or $5, doesn't matter. Uh, little by little, we the people, that's what I call doing it independently and with integrity. Thank you all. This is Sabal Edmonds, and I'll be with you soon again. Thank you.